gentleman, without question, is uh, one of the most extraordinary people we've ever had on the program. He is Clark C. McClelland, whose ancestry goes way back. He's an original American, and we can talk about that with him a little bit. But beyond that, he was a, an aerospace engineer, space shuttle fleet, NASA, a scientist, a great American patriot, who has paid a, a terrible price for bringing forth the truth about what he saw while he was working in the Apollo program. And what he saw was conclusive proof of E.T. visitation and E.T. interaction with American shuttle crews. You weren't supposed to talk about that. What happened to Clark McClelland? Well, he lost his retirement, his pension, his health care, and everything. They took care of him in the way they do many people who talk uh, too much or out of step. Uh, you can call Clark a whistleblower, but I would call him a, just a, a super American human being and patriot. And he's back with us tonight. I want to warn you that Clark is in uh, often extreme pain from uh, MRSA infections, which we are working on. And I hope that they are going to turn around very soon because he is using a very heavy dose now of Allison C, which has been proven in every case in the lab before they release it in capsule form to knock out MRSA. So uh, we're doing that internally, and he's using the external alloderm as well. And uh, hopefully things are getting better. How are you, Clark? I'm here, Jeff. I'm just tired, and I'm in a lot of pain, as usual. Yes, I understand. Uh, are the are the wounds beginning to show some sign of slowing down at all? Are we getting any kind of... Po- we, we just got your dose up recently to the proper dose. No, I haven't been taking it at that dose for a while. And uh, uh, yeah, actually, actually, the uh, extension of the wounds have actually grown. All right. I'm not saying it was the Alice and C, but... Well, what it is, it's a poor circulation. Uh, That's that, what I have. What they yeah. want to do now, a doctor just spoke with me. He wants to go in my right side with some type of probe. It goes across and then down my left leg from the right to the left. It goes down into the veins that he said they would open. They would open these veins, and if that if that occurs, it would be uh, it would be uh, helpful to my circulation because then he's saying that he believes the blood will flow. He told me though that uh, if they can do this. He does believe that my foot ailments down there isn't nowhere near what they've seen and they've cured in the past. So I have to determine whether I want him to do that or not. And well, I'm we gonna... we we always we always have to remember also that blood flow uh, yeah. brings the Allison C to the area of the yeah. bacterial infection as well. That's so right. anything you can con- now, I would urge you again. Now, I don't mind saying this on the air to talk to Doctor. Dean Bonley at the magneticosleep.com site. He sells the high-powered magnetic sleep pads, and Dr. Bonley wants to help you with one. All right, now, Clark, uh, the Stargate Chronicles, your book, you continue to somehow turn out new chapters. What I want to talk to you, Clark, in this hour has to do with the German scientists that you got to know, all of the great geniuses who came over here after the war. That's right. And they were, of course, the they were the people who took us into space, uh, and they were not uh, evil Nazis. Uh, they were they were scientists. Now, That's certainly. right. They all so, wanted to go into space and to the moon and elsewhere. And uh, of course, Hitler and his uh, secret agents uh, all kept them un- under lock and key, and they had the threat of their being killed and their families if they did not row the boat. And develop military weapons, rocket That's weapons. Right, exactly. Right. It. Uh-huh. So they had to do that. Dr. Von Braun, Dr. Werner Von Braun, my good friend. I I had him as a as a uh, person that that disclosed to me many top secret things that the Germans were working on, and he disclosed them, and then he was allowed by NASA to die. So. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, okay, now he died of cancer. Yeah, he died. Uh, he smoked a lot, so I believe that the smoking helped mm-hmm. cause that, of course. And mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I asked him to stop, and he did stop. 
But every now and then I could see that he picked up a cigarette, lit it up outside the hotels we were at Mm -hmm. for the man's flight awareness meetings. Yes. And uh, he did stop for a while, and then uh, I guess he restarted. I'm not sure. When he left NASA, I was not in touch with him hardly at all. But he told me things that uh, the world doesn't know. And the evil in this United States government right now, and not just this with Obama, but with uh, with with Clinton and the double Bushes, and they already passed into uh, uh, to uh, all the way down the line. They've all been controlled by a DSSG, a dictatorial secret shadow government. And when I observed the eight to nine foot tall giant inside the space shuttle in 1991. I I could observe, but not here. I could observe the arm motions to run right side where there was one of our NASA astronauts tethered to the side, and then on the left side another U.S. naval, a U.S. NASA astronaut was tethered to that side, and this large creature, humanoid, two arms, two legs, a torso, a head without a helmet on it, actually was giving them orders. He'd be pointing things out, and he would sweep his hand around aside if he wanted something that, that, that they may have said that he disagreed with, he, she, whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. But then that there evil creature, I guess it's an evil creature. Hard to know. I watched it for a minute and three seconds, and believe me, Jeff, I'm an artist and an observer. In a minute and three seconds or seven seconds, I forgot what it is now. Uh, I observed everything he did, and I had artists, of, excellent artists of mine, that has now been stopped from doing me any artistic renderings again. He did the uh, he did the uh, picture that you see when you open my Stargate hyphen Chronicles dot com, standing or floating in the uh, space shuttle payload bay. Mm-hmm. And they look like photographs, but believe me, audience, they are not. I wish they were. And six to seven weeks after I observed this eight to nine foot tall alien, uh, another aerospace engineer five stories down under the ground in New Mexico in a secret facility there that was tracking not only his shuttle, but all kinds of other craft. He contacted me and he said, Clark, I observed the same eight to nine foot tall creature inside the crew compartment of his shuttle launch. And there were two separate shuttle launches, mine and his. So that's why, that's another point of view of why NASA and the evil in this U.S. government destroyed my retirement that I earned for 34 years in the program. Eight hundred and... So 682 missions that I observed being launched or I was part of, I hold the record of that for one individual. Very, very large. Wow. Now, my shuttle giant, I saw a large ship past the tail end of the space shuttle. Well, which mission was this, Clark, that you saw I, the, the I, large I, alien I in will, there? Uh, Jeff, I will not, will not uh You're still that. not disclosing that. Okay, understood. No, no, the reason is, the families of those astronauts would be would be penalized. Would be, just would be destroyed by mm-hmm. the you know what you know what controlled media. Yeah, I got it. Okay, okay. all right, understood. Okay, uh, the, the, the feed you're talking about. Yeah, what happened to the feed? Was it just shut off? Somebody said, "Get it, that well, off of there." I was watching it in the payload bay. Two astronauts floating with a eight to nine foot tall alien with the alien ship behind the shuttle. Mm-hmm. I watched that for a minute and three seconds, and then the feed drifted away from the camera view I was having, and when it came back later, mm-hmm. the, the alien and the two Nastra asteroids were not there any longer. There's a possibility, because I've worked on the crew entry hatch into the into the uh, crew compartment. Yes. I, I believe that perhaps, I can't say for sure, that the uh, tall ET, eight to nine feet tall, went inside the crew compartment with our two astronauts that were there. I, I have the names, the astronauts and everything, but if I release them, 
They no, would be destroyed. They no, we don't be, want to do that. I understand. No, I will not do that. Good. Okay. Now, let me go back to some of the Germans. Oh, you, yeah. You've got a special chapter on, and we talked about this in the first hour. There's a fellow named Harry Cooper who is going to contact you. He was my guest this first hour. He's a okay. friend. He runs an organization called Shark Hunters, which is a yeah. a membership organization for World War II, German, American, and, and, and British soldiers and sub, submariners primarily, but all all branches of the service are represented. Yeah, he was the man who found out that Hitler and Ava Brown were taken out of the bunker, drugged by Martin Bormann, and, and did in fact end up in Argentina. Hitler lived there for about another 20 years and died. He's been to the house. He's, he's really broken the whole story open. He did this what, 20 years ago. What is his name again, Shark Hunters? All right, it's Harry. Harry. Hold on, please. I want to write this down. I'll tell you why. I've had 23 days of telephone uh, problems here, mm -hmm. and I don't want to. Harry what? Cooper. Hold on, please. I'm trying. Cooper. Okay, I've got it. All right, he's uh, he's the best, so give him your all. Okay. He will not let you down. He knows okay. all about Germany, German scientists. He'd yeah. love to talk to you. Now, your chapter 15 has to do with uh, the de Glock anti-gravity craft. That's right. And there's a picture here. I assume that's a representation of the de Glock, or is yes, that an actual is. photo? Okay, it's, it's a, representation. a representation of it. I could not get an actual photo of it mm -hmm. because everywhere I went, I was blocked. Right, Patterson and uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and New Mexico, mm -hmm. and also the, uh, the NASA offices in Washington D.C. Mm -hmm. So I I tried, but I I didn't. I, I could I could say what I saw of the de Glock when I was at uh, Kecksburg, Pennsylvania, uh, when that craft came down there in nineteen uh, what was it nineteen sixty five, I believe. And I, I, photogra I photographed it there. I wrote a total report of what I was observing. And, uh, and they had a guard following me with an armed rifle all the time. And, uh, I, I, I got around to the one side of the D Glock. And I was able to photograph certain pictures of it and, and the, and the, uh, and this, and the, uh, writing that was on it. And then he showed up again and told me, stop. Stop photographing. Well, what am I going to do with a rifled person that doesn't know his ass from a hole in the ground of what I'm trying to prove? Mm -hmm. And so he's following orders like it's always happened. Anyway, I had those. I tried to look at them when I got back to the Space Center, and they they blocked me from viewing anything I photographed there. And and the and the other the other person that was with me, Kexberg was a very high NASA official at the Kennedy Space Center. He took photographs, too, and later he told me he wasn't able to observe what he photographed either when he, when he got back with uh -huh, me. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So NASA and, and the evil shadow government, which is now called the New World Order, yeah, it blocked him and me from seeing the photographs we took. <laughs> how, how were you notified, and who flew you to the Kecksburg Crash! You must have gotten there very quickly and gotten almost immediate notice to get on a plane and go. Who ordered that? Uh, the base director, Dr. Kurt Debus, and he said the only person he knew of at the Kennedy Space Center that was worthwhile to send there was Clark C. McClellan, SCO for the space shuttle, spacecraft yes. operator. Okay? Yes, yes. So Dr. Debus was my friend, too. He was a German scientist that came over with Dr. von Braun. I observed in Dr. Devis's office General Hans Kambler. Hans Kambler, it was reported, had been murdered or killed right after the Second World War. Three or four times there were murder reports, different different sites, everything else. These were hidden sites. Uh, they were observed by the people like myself and others. But Kambler did not die after the Second World War. 